Hey, what's up guys? I'm just gonna be with my headphones on for just a second while I monitor that delay. That passing delay that's gonna have to be there for whatever reason until YouTube decides to kind of change whatever it is. Looks so far like it's looking pretty good. Let me know if it gets worse during the stream as usual and we can go ahead and adjust the delay so it's not too bad. But we already have some people in the chat and we have some good questions already. And so one of the first ones we had was, so we're going to kind of answer some questions that I had during the week as well as kind of talk about, let me adjust up a little bit, as well as talk about some additional um, things that I'm doing, um, some questions that came up in my videos during the week, um, especially if you're curious about what kind of behind the scenes stuff is. So let's go ahead and talk about some of these questions that I had. So. Welcome from Ohio. Someone asked me what my go-to hammock is, and right now it's the Dream Hammock. Darian is the number one that I kind of go to. Um, all of, not that it might be changing because I love my Dream Hammock, but uh, Dutch uh, from Dutch Wear Gear just came out with his Swift Hammock, which to me looks very similar uh, to the Dream Hammock Darian. Just his has a, a bit more modularity to it. Uh, he can attach a lot of his accessories. Um, but it's very similar, very minimalist, just a netted hammock. It's called the Swift Hammock. And so since I think his uh, Hexon 1.0 is proprietary for him, so I'm kind of curious to check that out. I've never tried out the Hexon. Um, let's see, phone. So local Libre or hammock gear. Devin from Backcountry Exposer asked this question. And so I have nothing against local Libre, but I've heard nothing but good things about hammock gear. And that's one of the things I want to talk about is right now with hammock gears econ line, I right now I think it's pretty impossible to beat them on um, any of their quilts. And we'll talk about some other manufacturers in a second. So let's see. Oop. How about the cheap hammocks used for the kiddos? Do you have one that you recommend? I'd say um, they're kind of a dime a dozen. There are tons of tons of cheap. Um, hammock options out there if you just go search on Amazon but beer butt is a fairly reasonable one that comes up fairly often and Grand Trunk um, also makes a very reasonable hammock um, that I wouldn't mind having the kids play around um, and uh, other brands like stick out or F Nova I think is what they call themselves on Amazon search for that and it's pretty reasonably priced hammocks if you just want to lounge around um, or even just get started hammock camping um, that's where I would go to so let's see all looks good. Do you need doors on tarps? <laughs> no, you don't really need a door on the tarp uh, for most situations is what I would say. Um, do I have a tarp of doors right now? Yeah, very small mini doors. I use the Warbonnet Mini Fly at least the last couple times I've been out. And I'll continue to use that doors. It's come in handy on some times when um, we've had kind of lashing and rain. I haven't tested the Mini Fly in that yet, but when I had the Mama Jamba before, the Warbonnet Mama Jamba, which does not have any doors on it, um, there was one time I got positioned kind of imperfectly, and so it wasn't a great spot to be in, and rain was kind of lashing in. I had to hang my jacket up, my rain jacket up, to stop the water from kind of getting the hammock soaked. Um, so something to consider. Do you need doors? No. And that's one reason I like the Mini Fly, is that the doors are there if I uh, want them. Scott for Life asking the question that probably gets asked the most in every single stream um, that I do is what's my go-to pooper scooper uh, or my camping trowel and that right now has to be the Chi Whiz uh, Big Dig is uh, the go-to of choice. A close second I think is the Vargo Dig Dig tool, very reasonable. Um, you'll be happy pretty much with either one. Uh, the Vargo Dig Dig tool is a little more expensive. The thing that concerns me about the Dig Dig is it has those serrations on the side and so I'm always a little leery of it like a uh, because they're, they're pretty aggressive serrations uh, on that camping trowel. And so I'm always afraid of it ripping some mesh or getting caught in a sleeping bag or my pack and just kind of ripping a giant hole in it. So just something to consider. Hey, part-time hiker, thank you very much. Even as, Devin says, even as a ground dweller, he is sold on quilts now. So he's probably going to go with the uh, Hammett Gear Burrow. And I, I don't think you can go wrong. Um, quilts are the way to go, I believe. And that's why you see a lot of the more, uh, even the more reasonable or kind of budget-minded manufacturers going towards quilts. And you see Perea, tell me if I said that right, Devin, uh, Perea Outdoors uh, going with that thermo down quilt. And I believe Outdoor Vitals is eventually planning on designing a quilt as well. So lots of quilt options. The nice part about quilts is that you have that 
um, compressed down in sleeping bags. You don't have to worry about it in quilt because you're just laying pretty much on the pad. And so with a quilt, you also lighten up that way. You tend to have less zippers, less snaps, although you can get some with that. Um, it's not something where it's um, out of the ordinary to have uh, a zipper on a quilt, but sometimes I think it's nicer to have that option. Oh good, the delay sounds perfect. So let's see, Stephen Valise says, love my enlightened equipment. We'll never buy another bag. I love my um, enlightened equipment 20 degree quilt um, as well, Stephen. It really is phenomenal. I, someone asked me, I think last stream, or kind of had a question about what uh, quilt to use, and I would recommend a 20 degree quilt all day long. It just give, covers you a wide uh, range of temperatures. If you only had one temperature rating to go with, I just go with 20 degrees. Uh, Milo Tang, hey Tim, do you ever plan on going light enough to use a frameless backpack or plan on going lighter in general? Right now, I, I kind of consider myself lightweight. I, I could get to ultralight uh, Milo or Milo. Um, sorry if I'm saying your name wrong. Um, I probably could get there if I changed some things with my tarp and lightened up my hammock setup even more. Honestly, right now, I don't see myself going ultralight. I don't feel like the need or like I have to. I feel going lightweight right now, I'm pretty comfortable. I bring some luxuries that um, ultralight guys may not carry. I bring a little heavier foam pad, for example. And so I kind of go lightweight so I can bring some more luxury things that are you know, not necessary, but I like having around. Deuce of Spades, and it's funny, Stephen, you mentioned Deuce of Spades. Um, I'm hoping to possibly get some uh, prototypes from Mike at the Tent Lab, um, just kind of for his revising the deuce of, deuce of spades um, maybe possibly getting some new versions out there and so of course you know who's the go-to guy for poop trials uh, or camping trials here on youtube yours truly and so hopefully getting a chance to check those out i've actually never checked out the deuce of spades to me it always looked a little too short and so i wasn't quite sure if i would use it or not um, so something to look forward to in the future in the channel hopefully uh, let's see, couldn't we just use what's left of our toothbrush handle to take a hold to save weight? You could. <laughs> Milo going frameless in a couple of weeks. And so that's a good question. I, I didn't respond to that. Talk about going frameless. I, I guess I don't see the uh, the need to. I have a bunch of people I hike with right now who do go, do go frameless um, or thinking about going frameless. Uh, Kyle, you may have seen him on the Red River Gorge trip, does have a frameless pack. Um, and I believe uh, Karate Josh takes the frame out of kind of the, the rods out of his pack, and I guess that's kind of frameless. Um, and that um, that is something he goes with. There was a question up above about the, uh, oh, there we go, the nine foot or 11 foot hammock and impact on light. I personally go with 11 foot hammock. I'm taller, I'm six foot, almost to two inches tall. Um, and so the 11 foot hammocks are way more comfortable than a nine or even a 10 foot hammock. And so you get a more comfortable and flatter lay, I think with the bigger hammocks, but of course, honestly, that really does depend. I wouldn't go as small as nine feet, uh, but 10 feet, depending on your height. And so I know Jason from Outdoor Adventures, he's a smaller guy. You, you wouldn't tell in his videos, but he's a smaller guy and a little shorter. And he feels fairly comfortable, I think, from what I remember his last video um, in a kind of a 10 foot hammock. But 11 foot is going to be more comfortable for sure. Uh, hammock gear can't be beat, in my honest opinion. Dot Caesar Berg. I'm never going to say that right. Uh, want a red orange EQ quilt? Yeah, those, there are a lot of good, so many different color options for quilts and tarps. It's just phenomenal to kind of see that, and so that's that's awesome. Uh, hey, from Iowa, agree on the twenty degree quilt. Do you include your cell battery pack cables in your base weight total? Uh, no, I don't, uh, Todd. Usually, because I keep that uh, cell phone on my person. Um, battery pack I consider it to be kind of a YouTube. Um, option and that's the only reason I carry it or I would just keep my uh, phone in airplane mode and not really use much power uh, cables no not not in my base weight at all I consider those to be um, just kind of additional YouTube things what is my ethnicity I'm actually <laughs> lots of different things so I am half Indian so you're talking East Indian by descent um, but that's a couple generations back I actually was born in Guyana which is South America and so my mom's side is East Indian descent, a couple generations, and then my dad's side is like um, my my grandfather on my dad's side was a missionary to Guyana, and so we actually have Scottish heritage, 
uh, or or English heritage, one or the other. I was told it was Scottish. Um, and so going back on my dad's side, so I'm technically a quarter Caucasian slash white. And then the other part is like uh, South American Indian. So that's a pretty complicated question for me. Um, but let's just say mixed is what I kind of consider myself in terms of ethnicity. Uh, let's see. Hey, headed to Guyana next week, Scout for Life. That's cool. Yeah, that's where I was born. But I don't remember much of it because I actually grew up in Barbados. And uh, But Guyana I visited uh, back. No, not Mexican. <laughs> Even though some people think because they see me that I can speak Spanish. And when I lived out in Colorado, that was often the assumption is that I knew Spanish. I do not uh, hablo un poco de español. It's usually my phrase that I tell uh, Spanish speakers. So let's see. Oh, the Burbies River. That's actually uh, Scout for Life. That is actually where um, my grand grandmother. Let's see. My yeah, my mom's uh, mom is from that area, the Burbies uh, area. So let's see. The lowest way I will go is. I guess that de depends. I, I'm comfortable where I am right now. A base weight of probably eleven to twelve ish pounds. Um, I think I feel comfortable at that weight right now i guess i would i don't see a need to go any lower um or kind of pushing to see how far or how low i could go i like being somewhat comfortable i mean i don't have the lightest setup and i know that i could go lighter with my hammock i could go lighter with an under quilt rather than a pad and so i just kind of go with what i have right now uh steven asking that question about the new osprey pack i believe he's talking about the levity which is kind of cool to see um ultralight stuff kind of going um mainstream and so that's really uh, nice. And so let's see, are you a psychologist? Yes, I am a psychologist. Um, and so that's, sometimes you'll hear uh, Subaru Josh referring to it in the trip videos. He'll kind of make fun of me or ask me how things feel. <laughs> uh, let's see, the question, most epic thing to happen to you when camping, does it have to be a good or a bad thing? Um, let's go ahead with, you know, I've talked about this before, but the kind of the craziest thing is when our car kind of got egged and we had that really tense situation, um, where those guys in Red River Gorge kind of came back to our campsite later, egged our car, um, drove off, peeled off again. And we just were generally jerks. It's probably the most, um, epic bad thing that happened, you know, where I, I consider it to be, um, memorable. Epic thing to happen while camping is probably, uh, that's a tough one, TFAR 9. But probably in Colorado, being out in the maroon bells and not having a soul around or not seeing a soul around for hours and hiking above uh, Maroon Lake was probably the most epic kind of experience that I remember having. I remember it's one of those experiences where you kind of not leave your body or anything like that, but you have this outer body experience where like this is just truly awesome. That view... Um, it's just absolutely amazing and it was just kind of fun overall to go see. Let me just go ahead and check this delay again. Yeah, everything kind of sounds good. I guess I'm being paranoid for nothing. Um, let's see. Definitely. What are some of your favorite uh, backpacking YouTube channels? Have you checked out uh, John Zahorian's channel? Yeah, I've seen uh, John's channel. One thing he does really well is he has very, uh, he actually got um, Kyle, uh, who goes hiking with has gone hiking with me a couple times actually put me on to John's channel That's pretty awesome. I love just the typical around the mill ones syntax um, Jason from outdoor adventures is probably one of my favorite channels and I'm just not saying that um, I like because he is very real and his style of hiking and um, Is just kind of very similar to mine and kind of his approach and so that works really well for me uh, Syntax I mentioned syntax already uh, Dixie from Homemade Wanderlust, of course. Uh, I check out Darwin and the Trail, uh, some common ones, and Follow Bigfoot are some of the main ones. You know, I follow lots of other YouTubers that are uh, that I follow their, their channels regularly, and so you see them here in the chat. So Devin from Backcountry Exposure, um, that hiking guy I follow. I mean, they're uh, Catherine Gregory. There are tons that I follow. My favorite big ones is usually the safe uh, guests to stay to, so that. I don't kind of hurt feelings like, oh, you don't watch my channel. Um, the big ones, Syntax, Jason from Outdoor Adventures, uh, Homemade Wanderlust, uh, Follow Bigfoot, Darwin on the Trail. That's kind of top 
top five that I know I, I for sure watch. Uh, let's see. Questions. Let's see. We have some good questions. Uh, have you ever have a tree limb fall in your hammock or have a bear walk up and sniff you out? No, uh, no tree limb falling in my hammock. I have fallen once in my hammock and that is when I first started and I was using kind of that, uh, the toggle method instead of a carabiner, I used a stick, which I thought was sturdy enough and it snapped on me. And that was, I think in my first night in Red River Gorge and that was not fun. <laughs> no bear walking up. We actually have never seen a bear on the trail. I know that sounds ridiculous. We've seen bear scat. We've seen deer. We've seen uh, bear sign, paw prints, that sort of thing. Never seen anything um, on the trail. How many miles does that let you, or how do how many miles do I get comfortably a day? Um, so in terms of usually what I try to go for, like when I'm planning a trip, I usually say 10 miles a day is a good baseline. Um, now, does that mean we end up doing uh, only 10 miles a day? No, it usually ends up being more closer to uh, 14 or 15, uh, being a, a very full day worth of hiking. I know some people like to go kind of the 20 miles or higher than that. That's usually, once I start hitting the 15 mile mark, that's where I, I'm like, I could go more, but I kind of want to get to camp and just chill out, and I don't want to kind of go any further. All those new things are not in my ramen noodle budget. And that's something, uh, Kaylin, I probably am I'm trying my best to, um, to talk about some more affordable things on the channel because I, I understand that some of these things are pretty expensive. Um, some of the good um, things out there, UGQ has some great sales. We're seeing some great sales on um, down quilts especially. Uh, UGQ is one that I've mentioned that has some of the lowest prices I've seen on quilts. Uh, Hammock Gears, Econ Line is great. Uh, Perea Outdoors, if you're thinking uh, even more budget-minded and Outdoor Vitals. Those are kind of my, they, they have some unbeatable deals right now on down. So it's a it's a fantastic time to be into backpacking. Uh, always consider why people talk so much about rucking and rucking, consider modding your hiking clothing into military salary, but John Mott has put 34K. Uh, I'm gonna pry whatever. I practice in a school, Todd, so that helps. Bruce and Russell, how do you feel? <laughs> Let's see. Oh, oh, sorry. Going down. Lots of college kids. Yeah. I have a Z pack taste of the ramen noodle budget. If there is one thing you could really splurge on, what would it be? Oh, I would say your pack. If you had to pick one thing that you want to spend a ton of your money on, it's going to be a pack. Um, I think that's just. I mean, being a, a backpacker, that's what you're going to carry most of your stuff on anyway. And so that's one thing I should uh, make sure that you uh, you spurge on. And yes, yeah, someone said, T Shug, I can't believe I forgot about Shug Emery. Um, sometimes he does some variety of videos, but if you're talking about hammock camping, uh, Shug has got to be one of my favorites. He, I always say he's more of an acquired taste, but once you get used to him, he is hilarious. <laughs> uh, let's see. z packs tape. Yep. So... So I think the Z-Packs are, are called one of my favorite purchases I've made. Second, a close second would be probably my Enlightened Equipment Underquilt, the 20 degree, sorry, top quilt. And then uh, third, probably my Dream Hammock Darien. Yeah, and Shoe.com, I've thought about doing that. But there's something about giving my DNA over to someone else that I'm like, uh, I probably do it every day in, you know, my spitting on people when I talk. <laughs> but it's something that when I think about it, that's what skews me out a little bit. Do I watch hiking videos while out hiking? Actually, no. I typically do not. I usually don't watch anything, even though I think on, on our last trip, for some reason, I remember it. I downloaded some movies from Netflix because we knew, you know, Dolly Sods was going to be a little bit easier in terms of a hike, and we're probably going to have some more time in camp. And what I've been noticing, too, is that going to bed super early, I wake up earlier than usual, so I've been trying to force myself to stay awake till about 10 o'clock um, before uh, going to bed in camp. Let's see. Hey, Bob. Check out Ibtat's channel, especially if you like real. Oh, well. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, Kaylin Strain, Dotsieberg. I would love to go to different places, but because I don't drive in style, one channel. Yes, yeah, Smell and Rose is another one that I like as well. Uh, when did I start hiking backpacking? That's the really great 
question. Uh, Robbie from Adventure Archives. And we we talk about you guys all the time on the trailer, Robbie. Um, start hiking and backpacking. I'd say hiking. Uh, I've always kind of done hiking and liked hiking. Um, so I, I don't know from the time I was a, a kid. But this is this is limited because hiking in Barbados, there's not much to do. But I always did it with my youth group in church. And I loved it. I loved um, doing, we did a lot of coastal hiking as a group. We used to go on one big trip every year. And I really, I think that really planted the seed to really getting into hiking and the outdoors. Even though at the time, I've never been a big outdoors person. Backpacking was actually only uh, two years ago, two and a half years ago now. Um, Josh will have to remind me. Um, But that's really when I got started into kind of backpacking and being into that. But hiking on and off for a while. When we were in college, we did some day hikes in the Adirondacks, and that's when I really got into it. Do I ever get in trouble with critters? Uh, sometimes. Uh, raccoons are, are the biggest ones. Luckily, we haven't had any problems with bear, um, but usually hanging our food. Mice sometimes. So mice and raccoons, those kind of critters, are the ones who probably bother us the, uh, the most, is what I'd say. And so Econ is 850. Yep, everything sounds good. Would I ever consider doing a through hike? I know you have a, f- a family, great job, etc. So I know it can be hard. I do love my job. Um, would I consider doing a through hike? Yeah, the one I'm con- closest to considering right now is just a smaller through hike. I'm still looking at the John Muir um, Trail, and uh, where was I? Let's see. Yep, still con- considering doing the the John Muir Trail. That's something that's really been on my mind. Um, but the leaving the kids for two or three weeks at a time like that is is really honestly my only hesitation um that's what the big hang up is but long term i'm hoping that i'm going to raise some pretty good hiking buddies and i'm going to bring my kids on the trail um, with me if i can so you know the the at something like that I, i've thought about um, i do get summers off and so i've thought about kind of splitting into two sections and doing something like that um we'll see in a few years, um, how my kids are and how things uh, overall look. Let's see, difference between the Burrow Econ 20 and the Burrow, do you happen to know the difference? Uh, Dotsie Berg answered that question, thanks. Uh, let's see. Uh, how did I become a Mountain House ambassador? I applied. They actually had a, an application um, going for a while there, so I applied and and you know who actually turned me on so that the applications were open is actually Ugly Tent. If you follow Ugly Tent Bushcraft and Survival, he posted kind of um, kind of celebrating that he was able to kind of get through the application process and was an ambassador. And um, that kind of made me think, hmm, that'd be something cool to kind of apply to. I mean, Mountain House is something we all use. And so I got through and I applied. Uh, when you come out to Utah and backpack with me, what tent will you bring? I know you've been pushing Utah a lot, Devin, and I, I, it's beautiful out there. If I had to choose any tent right now, one thing I'm looking into is I was kind of looking at tarp tents uh, offerings, and they're kind of redoing, I think, is it called the Rain Shadow 2? And so I'm trying to really look into that. Um, I was never really a tent, I, I guess... I stayed in tents, um, but I was never really a tent person um, because, remember, I wasn't really into backpacking or, honestly, not a whole lot of camping. Um, I like hiking, (laughs) Um, but in terms of why I kind of made the switch, it's sleep. Um, I get the most night's sleep out in the backcountry when I am in a a hammock. Like, I sleep better than uh, when I'm in my bed, and so that's the number one reason. Uh, I remember there were just too many nights where I got maybe a few hours of sleep um, and I decided something's got to be different. And so I went to hammocks and that's kind of where I went from there. Hey, Mike. Let's see. Wow. Lots of people. Um, Yep. Adventure Archives is the place to check out. Great channel. If you're not subscribed, check them out. Uh, like the centipede. <laughs> yeah, Robbie, that's that's kind of how I feel. Even though I hiked uh, before kind of my home country, 
I didn't do a whole lot of, I guess what you consider kind of American style backpacking or hiking. And so I kind of feel that same way that there's so much to see and there's so many places to go um, that it's kind of an exciting, exciting hobby to kind of get into. The long trail, uh, Todd is mentioning kind of long trail up in Vermont. And I actually looked in, you know, who, who also I really loved watching is Rob from Backpacking Adventures when he did the long trail in his series. That really inspired me to kind of get out there and do some stuff. And I, He's one channel that's kind of, uh, I haven't seen any videos from him in a long time, but I kind of wish he would come back <laughs> because he's one of those guys that I, I really enjoyed watching and his videos of the long trail were really inspiring. Yep, Bigfoot is doing the John Muir Trail. Hey, Carrier's Journey. Uh, Jack's doing the Fiery Gizzard. Do you plan on doing any long hikes? Robbie kind of asking that. ATPC, right now nothing's in the plans. Uh, three young kids, and so no big plans on doing any of those long hikes. Um, but uh, the AT more for the history. PCT for sure uh, more just because it's beautiful. Like just gorgeous. Watching Dixie uh, from Homemade Wanderlust uh, do that has been pretty awesome. Uh, Milo asking to get into one of AA's videos. Never had any freeze-dried foods. Let's see. See ya, Steven. Uh, hang hammock in your bedroom. Perfect. Let's see. Have I ever taken my kids on a backpacking trip? This is from Milo. And the answer is no, I have not. Um, and that's something I'm really wanting to do. My kids are, are seven, six, and three. Sorry, four. I just birthdays and so those ages all together is um, a little more difficult to go on true backpacking trips we just have to do lower miles and so i'm hoping to slowly get them into some camping and then we'll start doing some hiking they've been hiking before on day hikes but never anything significantly long um, just building up endurance and stamina and they ask me every time that's probably one of the hardest things is they they ask me every time i go on a backpacking trip can we come with you this time and so I'm hoping, you know, someday we will. Uh, we're just not quite there uh, yet. Um, swamp hiking. That, that'd be interesting. I, I will give most anything a try. Do you do anything to stay in shape uh, between hikes? And yeah, I'm going back to our kids. Yeah, I'm starting off with some car camping um, just to kind of get used to that. Do I do anything to, in shape? Sorry, to stay in shape between hikes. The answer to that is is yes. Um, I'm sometimes really bad about it in the summer, but I'm gearing up again. Um, running is the biggest thing. And honestly, I absolutely hate running. It's like the worst thing ever. I complain about it um, while I'm running. I complain about it before I go running. I usually feel a little better after the run, but it's one of those things I slog through um, just because I know that it does help me. I can tell right away it helps me uh, when I'm backpacking, when I'm out hiking. That's the big thing I do, as well as just kind of some little things at home, push-ups, sit-ups, kind of core strengthening exercises, squats, those kind of things. Um, but I, I hate, I hate running. <laughs> but honestly, I can, I can tell when I'm getting in really good shape by, by one thing I measure is my mile time. I try to, to uh, walk run. Uh, I usually walk, uh, run about the first mile and a half, and then um, walk run. Uh, the last mile and a half and I do that about three times a week. That's kind of my overall regimen and Subaru Josh tries to go with me He lives pretty close by um, We kind of try to keep in shape that way and you can tell when, when you're in peak shape when you're doing something like that fairly regularly in preparation for a backpacking trip. It, it's great Hey Adam from restless outdoors going to Dolly Sods that area is beautiful I think you're really gonna enjoy it Adam and the colors will be gone, but it's still really nice Make sure you check out lion's head <laughs> Todd's asked me about education questions, Common Core, yeah or nay, and particularly how it applies to special needs students. That's actually the population I work with the, the most um, mixed, is what I'd say in terms of Common Core. Um, Todd, I think I can see the benefits in terms of setting some overall standards, but where it really concerns me is math and teaching students with special needs. Nate, thanks for complimenting the videos and how they look. In terms of camera, gimbal, editing software I use, what you've seen up to this point, Dolly Sods is the very first video that I started using. Um, Final Cut Pro is the software that I'm hopefully gonna be using. Uh, up to that point, I've used iMovie pretty much exclusively. Uh, gimbal, I don't use a gimbal. In terms of uh, a camera, I use the iPhone 7 right now. 
I know the color zipper looked pretty good. At some point, I could upgrade, um, but right now it works. I like just for I really enjoy hiking trips and filming hiking trips from my perspective. It's not anything as uh, like I know Robbie's and and Adventure Archive stuff is gorgeous. Like I think that cinematography is amazing, and you guys know that's just each person has their own unique style to bring to videos, and I really enjoy watching the different unique styles. Um, and so that's kind of the phone kind of fits my uh, my mode of hiking and oftentimes you'll you'll notice uh, in the video when I'm hiking if there's been a gap or I go ahead and and miss a bunch of, um, of footage and you're like wait he just covered a couple miles that means I'm really tired <laughs> or there wasn't a whole lot to see is the big thing let's see uh, zoom for, yep ver Robbie's right. I think that I enjoy sports related exercise. So if someone says, Hey, let's go play soccer or let's go play basketball, even though I'm really bad at basketball or let's go play something like ultimate Frisbee, for example, um, I would love to do that. Um, but when it gets to running or something, that's the real reason I do running is because it's easy. It's something where I can just walk at my door and boom, come back in 35 minutes usually. And I'm back home. So, and you just burn a lot of calories that way. Let's see. Injuries while backing. I have not had anything major. The The biggest thing that uh, I've had when backpacking, Bob, in terms of an injury, and this is actually seems so small, you guys are kind of kind of laugh. How long have we been going? Okay, 36 minutes, good. Um, you'll kind of laugh when you, when you hear this. But when I switched to the last Sportiva Wildcats, when I switched to the last Sportiva Wildcats, what happened is I actually, they have a, uh, what you call it, a nylon shank in the top of that shoe uh, or toward the toe section. And so what happened is that my toe wasn't getting enough um, flexion is the word I, was, word I would use. And so I actually had some, I'm going to believe some uh, toe pain. And I, I want to say some slight nerve damage after that Michigan trip where I tested out those shoes. I returned the shoes, went back to the Solomon Speed Cross, haven't had any issue at all. Um, but it didn't flex enough for me. And so I really had a hard time with that. I It scared me for a while. It took a few weeks before I actually had back to normal feeling um, in that um, in those toes. Pretty much like the, the middle three-ish. See a killer... College, I will tell you that I went to college in Western New York. It was a small uh, college, so I won't tell you the exact college. Uh, gimbal, like grunt. So now I know. I, You'll notice sometimes I have some words that I pronounce differently. So, for example, it took me a while to get Perea, or I think it's Perea, <laughs> and not Peria outdoors, um, because sometimes some of the... Uh, pronunciations of words are are different and that's kind of my my accent coming through if you will let's see what is your next trip planned it has not been asked yet Kira my next trip planned is probably going to be a family oriented trip um, to Hawking Hills is the plan um, and this is one I do want to bring my kids on so those guys who are asking those questions about um, bring my kids on any hikes that's the plan right now. Um, we'll see where that overall goes. And then I'm hoping to get back to the Smokies in November um, for a quick overnight. So let's see. Let's see. Get a dog trainer to do Frisbee. Yeah. I I don't mind uh, dog, And I, I like dogs. Don't get me wrong. Um, the hard part is being a dog owner and having the responsibility to kind of take care of it. <laughs> like I always tell my wife, like, sure, let's get a dog. Um, I will walk it and make sure I feed it. But I don't like the gross parts of coming and being a dog owner. Uh, so I, I love the routine of being able to um, go out for a walk with dogs. And my wife grew up with, um, I think she had two to three dogs at different times. Um, but now that we have three kids, it becomes a little bit more difficult to uh, be a pet owner and parent of three kids see you mike robbie's vlog I, if you haven't checked out uh robbie and your last name I, i'm gonna say it's do you say i i know i'm not gonna mispronounce it someone someone tell me in the uh, comments below how to pronounce robbie's name um 
So let's see. His vlogs are awesome. They're really on point. I, I love the editing in them, Robbie. Let's see. Envy you. What a way to get on it. Let's see. Yeah, Dolly saws the colors were amazing. Um, and when it, when we went in um, just a few weeks ago. How does my wife feel about backpacking hobby? She's pretty supportive. Um, she just sees it as my thing. And so it's not something she's ever, I don't think she's ever be interested in it. And I, th I think she will be interested in it if all the kids are into it. And all of them seem very interested in doing it with me, especially the idea of going up mountains. Uh, of course, they're littler, so they're not getting the idea of, sometimes it's hard uh, going up mountains. And so I think eventually that's how I can kind of guilt her into coming with us. <laughs> and so she's already started to say, I can see how this is going to go is that I'm going to have to come because I don't want to be um, that party pooper mom who doesn't come with uh, dad and the kids and dad's out there uh, just kind of having fun camping. And so eventually I think we're going to get her to kind of come into it. Uh, it's just a matter of time, uh, but she's very supportive of it one thing we make sure we do is that we trade time. So that's one thing people have asked is how do I make sure that I get all that time off to go hiking? And so for you, it looks like it's a lot. Uh, it's it's a fair amount. So I'd say I aim for at least one outing every uh, month is my goal. Don't always hit that, um, but at least uh, two, at least an overnight every month, if not two or three nights um, is pretty typical. Uh, very supportive of it. She just understand in any marriage or relationship there's a give and take so we have to make sure that i am not just meeting my needs alone Oop. and um she feels that you know supported and she's not being left to fend with the kids for herself for always uh get a guppy instead yes bob hopefully your uh, wife's mom um does i don't know re recover or improves or feels feels better car camping and an easy loop yep i think that's a that's the plan. plan. Wong or... See, I was thinking more Wang, but we'll, we'll see. Yeah, I think those are great ways to introduce kids to hiking. Um, Kara, I, we've been slowly kind of building up on just kind of smaller hikes, bring plenty of snacks, lots of water, and kind of take it with no uh, real plans, per se. And so far, that seems to have, have worked. Now we just got to go a little, a little longer. Let's see. And let's see. Getting some questions. You guys were, were great in the chat. My gosh. Okay. Huang. Okay. Robbie Huang. Yep. So if you haven't checked out Robbie's vlog, hey, Alex, if you haven't checked out uh, Robbie's vlog, be sure to do that because it's it's awesome. I think I've learned a lot about editing or at least got some ideas for editing. So sometimes I'm like, that's an amazing sequence. There's no way I can do that. Um, so you do a really nice job, Robbie. Uh, let's see some questions I had uh, if you guys have watched my last video is about putting that beer canister in the arc hall um, a comment you may not have seen is someone who actually came back from the JMT um, said that they had some of the, the the BV 500 had these like little plastic nubs on it and they had a problem with it actually wearing through part of their pack because depending how it shifts and rubs while it's in your pack that's a possibility so something to consider um, people kind of commented on, yeah, the arc in my pack is what kind of stopped the bear canister for, from, um, from dropping in properly. And so that's something to consider. Of course, if you, if you loosened up the arc in the pack, uh, of the arc hull, um, you would have no problem dropping that, uh, bear canister in there. And that's what I kind of wanted to show, um, is that it's not something that, um, uh, was a deal breaker by any means. It's just something to consider is that I noticed with the large arc that I put in my pack, um, it's something that uh, I would want to know. Let's see, how did I get started in hiking? Kara is asking that question. And in terms of how I did it is probably my church youth group um, when I was back home in Barbados kind of did these uh, big trips and kind of a lot of coastal hiking. And it was a lot of fun. And that's honestly how I got started in it when I was younger. Um, more recently, I kind of got into it because to, to lose weight, I kind of get more into shape and get more fit. I thought at first it would just be something that I would do to to lose weight and kind of keep it off. Uh, and then it became something that I really loved just for doing it and being outside. And so that's kind of the story of how I, I got into hiking in general. 
uh, I had a lot of good questions and comments on that sleeping pad in a hammock video. And I think a lot of people, those of you guys who follow me um, pretty regularly know that I use a sleeping pad in a hammock. And that's no surprise to you. But I think it surprised a lot of people who were kind of uh, new and maybe that was the first video they saw. Um, but I really like that. I actually uh, prefer it right now. Uh, I first started getting into using a sleeping pad in a hammock um, because that was... Um, in case I had to go to the ground, and so that was an option for uh, for me. And but what it eventually came into is that I loved how warm the Neo Air X Therm is, and I just enjoyed that. Uh, I just kind of got used to using a pad. It doesn't slip around a whole lot for me. I sleep on my back, and so it's not something that um, that I have an issue with. Oh, uh, let's see. I already talked about hammock gear, econ quilts, and I already talked about UGQ quilts being really great. Um, in terms of something I didn't mention in the sleeping pad hammock video um, is uh, using that, if you look for that rubber shelving material that you can find in your kind of Walmart or home, uh, I don't know, hardware type store, the ones that go in the bottom of shelves or cupboards, that actually, uh, Prep for It, who kind of follows my channel uh, and comments, makes some really good comments, suggested actually laying that in the bottom of your hammock if you're not concerned about weight, and that will stop the shifting around. As well as if you have a double layer hammock, of course, that's an easy way to kind of slip it in there. And um, I actually have tried it in a double layer hammock, and I don't like it as much uh, because even though it fits in the sleeve nicely, um, unless there's some way to stop it from moving in the sleeve, it can still slip around a bunch more. Uh, later, Adam. Tim, have you ever slept in a hammock using an under quilt and a top quilt? Yes, yes. It it is hands down the most comfortable. Uh, if you if you are purely concerned about comfort, that is the way to go. That is the most comfortable. Um, probably easier to set up. Probably faster to set up. Um, and that I mean that works for me. Let's see. Yeah. So, Kara, the the big reason I I made that um, switch is um, just because I was going out west where there might not be trees. And so I started preparing or prepping um, using a pad and a hammock. And I just never have gone back because it, it works really well for me. I never have to worry about migrating any down, never really have to worry about any possible cold spots or adjustment, toss the pad in there and be done. Eric asking for trip planning advice for Newbies, um, I guess it depends what aspect of trip planning you're talking about. Uh, advice in general, I'd say I love following Facebook groups and seeing photos that they post. So I follow the hikers page on Facebook and the backpacking page. So sometimes I see pictures and I'm like, wow, that looks really awesome. Um, also YouTube. So if I'm thinking about ideas, that's where I get it from. Um, use good maps. It's another good one I, I look at. Um, so I plan out, uh, I try to plan one big event every day that's the probably the key advice i can give and so i enjoy seeing things be it a waterfall be it a summit whatever it is a vista i want to see something cool at least once every day and so i plan my trips around those and so what i try to do is i try to make up the mileage and figure out where water sources are on the map figure out where is going to be the big event for the day and where i'm going to camp for the night see you get those kids to bed uh, do I listen to any podcast music while hiking? I do not. Although, if you're asking me what kind of music I listen to right now, uh, probably that would be based on Pandora. I listen to um, Flor Florida <laughs> and Pitbull right now is kind of what's coming. Pandora, uh, Black Eyed Peas is something else that comes in. Um, depends on my mood as, as well. You're talking like a uptown funk um, type of music. What's that guy's name? Oh, Bruno Mars. <laughs> uh, see you, Devin. So that's kind of, if I were to listen to something, I usually don't listen to music while I'm out there um, or podcasts, um, but that's the kind of music I listen to. In terms of summer base weight, Bob, you're talking about right about 11 pounds is, is what I carry right now. Have you ever run uh, I've stuck with tents because I'm always paranoid that I won't have any place to actually hang my hammock. Have you ever run into a situation where you don't have anywhere to hang? Sometimes I do. And that that's that's kind of the anxiety that led me to to have a pad in my um, in my hammock, Robbie. 
And so that's honestly why I started. So there, there have been some cases where I've come close, um, especially when you're talking, I mean, there are three hammock campers who usually, you know, there are three of us who hammock camp and that makes it even more difficult um, to find some spots, but we've always found spots to hang. Um, we've just been really fortunate. Uh, sometimes we have to kind of make it work, kind of squeeze in uh, fairly close together, um, but we've always been able to find a spot. But that anxiety like you're talking about is what uh, initially led me to start uh, using a padded hammock. Do I hang my beer canister or tie it to a tree, just leave it in the ground? Some people just told me to leave it on the ground unsecured. Yep, I just leave it on the ground. Um, whenever I've done it, I don't tie it to a tree. Um, typically, you don't want to wedge it or tie it to a tree, I believe, because it, it gives the bear kind of some leverage to kind of pry open the bear canister. So I would just kind of leave it on the ground unsecured. Just make sure you don't leave it in an area like by a cliff or someplace that could roll downhill, a flat area, um, and it'll be fine. Uh, you know, most times so far, uh, at least in the maroon bells, uh, my bear canister was kind of undisturbed. Uh, hike prep, use hiking upward. Yep, yeah, that's a great site. Um, hiking upward, all trails is another good one as well. Let's see, I actually met the owners on Ramsey's draft, refused a hiking stick going across the draft and fell flat on my bum. So the owners know me through that. <laughs> so that, hopefully that answers your question. Let's see. One other question I got during the week is uh, talking about using a pee bottle in a hammock. And these are for, for guys, of course, even though they do make some... Um, appliances, I guess you want to call them for girls to be able to pee, uh, stand up or using a pee ball in a hammock. I do not use a pee ball in a hammock. I get out. <laughs> um, even though, I, especially in the colder months, I can see it being really tempting um, to use a pee ball in a hammock. It's just, there's something about sleeping next to your own pee in a bottle that I don't really, I don't know, don't want to jive with, I guess. Uh, another general hammock camping question I got during the week. And let's see, I think this is going to be, unless you guys have any questions um, down below, so shoot them in there before I kind of um, answer this question. But someone was saying that they have some strain in their knees while hammock camping. And so those of you who hammock camp know that it can be caused by kind of hyperextension. Um, but one of the big two things I usually will recommend if you're having kind of a strain in your knees while hammock camping is, first of all, I would try raising your foot end uh, higher than your head end. I usually judge about six inches or so, or kind of a, uh, a, a palm's uh, length higher on the foot end is where I start with. You can go a little higher as well, um, but that's usually where I, where I um, end up going, and that usually will release some of that pain, as well as you can try putting some uh, clothes or a pillow or something under your knees to kind of help with that, and that usually um, will help. Uh, but I think your hang is probably where I'd start experiment with it adjust favorite campsite uh, I'd say my favorite campsite I don't remember the number but it's on the way uh, when we we're coming down um, from Gregory Bald and there's just just epic campsite in the Smokies um, it was right next to a, a kind of a mountain river just kind of my my perfect mountain uh, stream or creek and it just looked awesome uh, just perfect these moss covered rocks um, and if you look at when we did um, Abrams Falls uh, and did a loop all the way around to Gregory Bald and watch that that series of videos, you'll see the, the our last campsite on that uh, day was just awesome. I use a dream hammock, Darian, uh, Kara. Uh, I use whoopee slings and I do have a ridge line in it. Um, I use um, carabiners as kind of a toggle um, system and I use a Marlin spike hitch. Um, to kind of sling the, the whoopies over. How much weight have you put in your Z-Packs pack and do you have to pack ultralight for it to feel fit and feel okay? No, you don't have to go ultralight. I'd say, um, from what I remember, I think I've taken up to about 31, uh, no, no, 21 pounds, I think is what the furthest I've taken it up to. And it becomes really difficult to, uh, sorry, 21 pounds is the furthest I've taken it up to kind of one on the trail. Um, it's when you're talking bear canister, extra water, that sort of thing. Um, in terms of, um, I'm getting messed up with numbers here, but I, I believe that they say 35 pounds-ish is where you should kind of stop. That's the upper limit. 
You don't need to be ultra light to, um, to have the ZPAX arc hull and have it feel comfortable. The belt system does a nice job transferring it to your um, hips. Once again, this is all really personal, um, but I'd say high 20s is about where I've taken it when I've tested it. Uh, field testing, you're talking about 21 pounds. So hopefully that answers your question. I did have uh, a few comments on my last uh, arc hall videos. There were two people, I think, specifically who said that they had some discomfort with that mesh back panel kind of twisting and uh, hurting them in the back, kind of do some chafing. And so that's something to consider as well. Uh, pretty personal. Plastic or metal dishware. And so the only kind of dishware I bring, I use, uh, I guess it's nylon, but plastic, but it's the Human Gear uh, Duo. It's kind of my silverware that I bring. And that that hands down is awesome. Um, and then my, my dish is pretty much my titanium pot. Um, and I, I like that a lot because in terms of what I do on the trail, uh, Jonathan, you're talking pretty much, it's going to be boiling water, rehydrating food. And then most everything else is kind of in uh, Ziploc or plastic bags. I don't do any necessarily, um, heavy duty cooking on the trail. Pros, cons. Um, I think it's once again, it might, depending on weight, depending on dish where you're, you're bringing. Um, so I, Titanium for me is pretty easy just because it's light, um, transfers heat fairly well. Uh, my water boils pretty quickly. Uh, I try not to use a, uh, a metal spoon or a spork or anything like that um, just because I couldn't find um, one that... Uh, so the Human Gear Duo, if you've seen it before, and go ahead and, and Google it or check it out on Amazon. Um, what it does is it uh, kind of separates and can make a long-handled spoon or fork and it clips together, and I like that. There wasn't anything metal that was like that. I bet your electronics add to your weight when you plan on shooting lots of video and pictures. Hey, Mark, so this is my brother in the comments below. Um, yep, they do add to your to your weight a little bit, but honestly, for, for me, um, you're talking about something close to, um, I don't know, a pound or two when you consider battery. It's nothing like a Robbie or Adventure Archives, um, you know, carrying that giant monopod or batteries that they take. So will I try the fuel cubes again? Mm, maybe for fun. <laughs> I know Bob's all about the fuel cubes and the S-Bit stove, um, but that just has not been my thing. Uh, probably would just stick with alcohol or canister, Bob. But, wow, that's coming on 56 minutes, and thanks for hanging out with me, guys. There are 21 of you still. I know there was... I think 30 something at its peak, but thanks for watching. And I am going to go to bed soon. Let's see. It is past my bedtime, 10, 15, but I'm going to have a busy day tomorrow, hang out with the family. So I wanted to do this on Tuesday instead of Wednesday, but Wednesday is usually the typical time. You guys have a great evening and thanks for hanging out and talking. Uh, I think we'll probably, seems like every two weeks seems like a good routine. And we'll answer kind of uh, questions that I've got on the channel since uh, those two weeks or the two videos that I've put out. And you guys have a good evening. Peace out, guys. Thanks for uh, stopping.